This uh, question is for Frank. I guess anyone can chime in, though. But last night you alluded to the uh, the God of the Old Testament in the um, that he's racist and sexist and all the ists. Right. Um, what, what, when you're debating that with someone who is of the um, the more common worldview, um, who who already, I guess, the liberal persuasion that tends to think, I guess that all those those things are already. Um, we, we're all guilty of those as well. How do you, without just saying, well, you know, you, you got to take it in context, or without the, going to a huge dissertation on the Old Testament, how it all weaves together? How how do you um, how do you explain that to them? Well, the first you, first of all, you can't do it without context. But the question that you need to ask somebody is, if there is no God, why is anything in the Old Testament wrong according to your view, right? Because if there is no God, everything's a matter of opinion. Killing Canaanites or not killing Canaanites is irrelevant. We're all there's no right or wrong. So an atheist has no grounds to complain about anything in the Bible. But if an atheist says, well, it's a problem for you, you say God is good. Now, that's a fair question, right? You say that's a fair, a fair question. I a answer this in the book, Stealing from God. Let me just give you the one-minute answer. Um, so, just, so let's just take the Canaanites, for example. Does God just wake up one morning like a mafia boss and go, Canaanites, I want them dead? No, he gives reasons, right? What are the reasons the Canaanites need to be either pushed out of the land or eradicated. He says, well, they've been doing all these detestable things for years and I've been warning them for over 400 years. The iniquity of the Canaanites is not complete. One of the things they were doing is they were sacrificing their children on the molten hot god known as Molech. It was this metal bean that they heated up in fire and they had the, this bean had its arms out and they would put their babies on the arms of this Molech god and just basically watch the baby sizzle. And the drummers would play the drums louder so the parents in the village wouldn't hear the screams of their own kids. And God finally said, well, this needs to end. Now, on every college campus I go to, I have some atheist saying, if there is a good God, why doesn't God stop all the evil in the world? Here's an instance in the Bible where God says, enough of this, I'm going to stop it, and the atheists are complaining about it. Yeah. Right? A really good resource for this, too, is a, a guy named Paul Copan. Exactly. He's just brilliant out of Florida. He's a philosopher, and he's written a book called Is God a Moral Monster? He's written a sequel that just came out also. So he's kind of addressed this issue in much more uh, depth, and it's a very accessible book. It's called Is God a Moral Monster? And he'll talk about this issue, you know, the fact that God didn't just surprise you. But also he talks about some of the language that's used in the Old Testament that is uh, allegorical. In other words, it, they're kind of ancient Near Eastern phrases that talk about wiping out everyone. That no, nothing, I mean, in reality, they don't wipe out everyone because you see in the Old Testament, several books later, that this people group is still in the land. They still exist. So the expression about the to total um, annihilation of this people group is part of an ancient Near Eastern allegorical statement that other ancient uh, documents also use. So it's a combination of several things. And I want to just say this to you. Anyone sign time someone levels an argument against Christianity that can be uh, leveled in 140 characters on Twitter, <laughs> it's tempting to try to answer the uh, out the uh, the claim in 140 characters on Twitter, and that's never the case. A murder takes place in an instant, but I have to reconstruct it in front of a jury over eight weeks with thousands of images, several ex why? Because you, this is the nature of responding to the event. And so the problem I think we have is that we want to answer that kind of objection really quickly, when in fact it's a cumulative case answer, it's very it's much more detailed, and that's why, I'll be honest with you, I don't get involved, even if I post something online, to make people aware of it, and then an atheist comes up underneath it and makes some, you know, one paragraph retort, I am not going to get involved in a dialogue online. I reserve mm -hmm. these kinds of conversations to the people who I have mm -hmm. time with, mm -hmm. and hopefully repeated time, so it's my brother-in-law, I'm mm -hmm. going to see him again tomorrow, I just make, that's where I, I make the case. Mm -hmm. If I know I've got a jury for eight weeks, I'll make the case. If I've got eight minutes with you, I'm probably not going to be able to go that far with you. By the way, one other thing about that, you might ask the person who brings up the objection, are you pro-abortion? If they say yes, you might say, why is it that when God kills people in the Old Testament, he's immoral, but when you kill people now, that's a moral right? 